Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we've got a special guest and that's Daniel from Living Room Satoshi or Wallet of Satoshi as we've been talking a lot about recently. And you guys set out to build the world's most user-friendly lightning wallet and plenty of our followers have tried it and they absolutely love it. So give us a bit of a background into why you built that and why you think lightning is so important, Daniel. Yeah, I don't have a t-shirt for Wallet of Satoshi yet, so I'm still using this one. But yeah, Lightning is something um, I've been waiting for ever since I started this company, you know, four or five years ago. You know, Bitcoin has some excellent properties. It's amazing as a, as a currency, you know, a decentralized currency, a currency without a government. But as I've always said consistently, it's not a very good payment system. It's just not designed to do that. Um, it's designed to be that currency base layer. Um, so, you know, I've worked on payment systems in the past and they need predictable fees, they need instant confirmations, they need guaranteed settlements. And that's something that Bitcoin just can't do without compromising its fundamental properties. So this lightning layer on top of it is, is a proper retail system. And, you know, that's why I'm so excited about it. It really is a competitor for Visa. Um, you know, it has, it has predictable fees, it has instant confirmations, it has instant settlement and the capacity for payments is just immense. Yeah, you know, it can cover all the world's payments if we want it to. And that's a really important point that you just touched on there. There's ways to scale all blockchains and there's other people experimenting, but it's normally trading off for that security. We've seen top 20 coins get 51% attacked um, and all the other range of issues and no one's come up with a perfect solution yet. So keeping that base layer as the world's most secure network and decentralized and then building on top of it is why I think this is so important. I agree with all that, Daniel? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it, it's good that people are trying different things, um, but, but Bitcoin really needs to be that security-based layer and not pretend to be a payment system because it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So let's jump into a few of the questions we had about the wallet of Satoshi. So there was three um, top-up options with a Bitcoin transaction, a Lightning transaction, or a fiat transaction, and they all have slightly different fees. So what's happening uh, behind the scenes if someone tops up with each of those three options? Yeah, so basically, I mean, the core of our service is that we're, we're a liquidity provider for the Lightning Network. So we run all of the infrastructure, for the Bitcoin um, full nodes, the Lightning full nodes, um, and have topped up payment channels in lots of directions so that you can just hop on and get started straight away. Um, so that's the core of it. So if you, if you want to enter the, the um, Lightning system, then we've given you the option to just send us BTC and then we'll convert it instantly to a balance on one of our Lightning nodes. Yep. Um, and it just works straight away. The same thing with Australian dollars. You can send us Australian dollars, we'll convert it to a Lightning balance and you can use it straight away. I'm pretty sure it's the only way to, to get on with Australian dollars at the moment. Yeah, and that does attract higher fees because there are a couple of steps and other things involved. And that's, is that right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But if you're receiving or sending Lightning payments, um, you know, there's, there's really no fees and there's no cost to us either. It's just the cost of sending a packet of data across the internet, which is basically nothing. So once you're in Lightning, um, fees are very insignificant and fast and cheap. And when someone says, oh, how is this secure? As you said, this is a custodial service and we'll talk about how that might change uh, in the future, but you, you guys are holding these funds um, at this stage. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Lightning's designed as an open payment system. Anybody can connect to it. If you want to, you can run your own full node, you can run your own Lightning node and interact with it that way. And that's one of the huge benefits of Lightning over, say, Visa. Um, you can get direct access to the payment rails if you want to. So merchants can do that, payment processes, individuals, anyone can access it. Um, so we're, we're basically acting like a payment processor. We've implemented this custodial wallet because you know, some people just don't want to manage all that stuff. And especially when it comes to a wallet just for spending, um, you know, buying your lunch and buying your coffee, it's a worthwhile trade-off um, to let a custodial wallet handle all of that um, and you can just use it. Yeah, so people can think of this as having some cash in your wallet, a small amount, because we certainly aren't encouraging people to put large amounts in there or, you know, you should store your own Bitcoin in your own custody. But at the moment, if you want to use the Lightning Network while this is all very new, uh, literally in beta, um, this is a great solution. Yeah, so we actually limit the amount of money that you can put in the wallet um, just to a small amount, uh, $500, I think. Yeah, absolutely. If, you're, if you've got Bitcoin savings, you should be taking care of those things yourself. Don't rely on a custodial service for that. Um, but if you want a, a Lightning spending wallet, then you can just top up this wallet and use it. 
And just as all the other um, software improved over time, the front ends and all that, hopefully in the future, it will get a lot easier for someone to run their own uh, Lightning node or there'll be um, Lightning integrated wallets we're already starting to see. So all that thing will just make it easier and easier and hopefully gets to the stage where people will be comfortable running their own node and using it that way as well. We're still very early in this technology. It feels a lot like Bitcoin early on. Um, there's people um, improving the user experience all over the place. Um, so yeah, you're definitely an earlier adopter if you're using it now, but but everything will get better over time. Yeah. So with the invoices, that's uh, that's new for someone that's just using Lightning Network for the first time. So again, it's kind of like when you look at a Bitcoin address for the first time, and it's a bit scary, but it's very similar. You're just pasting that invoice of where you're sending funds to. Yeah, functionally, it's pretty similar. So um, you're just scanning a QR code and paying it, just like any other Bitcoin wallet. Behind the scenes, it works a little bit differently. So in Bitcoin, you can have an address that you can reuse multiple times, um, whereas Lightning is more of a live payment system. Um, because it's been designed for retail payments, it works a bit differently. So the receiver needs to generate an invoice, and then the payer pays it. So that ensures that it, it can only happen once, um, and it works like a retail system where uh, funds are instantly settled. Yeah. So it's slightly different, but it, functionally it works the same. And if you if you download our wallet, you, you'll get the hang of it very quickly. And again, I don't want to get too technical, but when people say, oh, Lightning is in Bitcoin, it's kind of true. But at the same time, every invoice updates that ledger, that second layer. And so if there's any disputes, then we send it back to the main chain and Bitcoin is the arbiter to seek the truth. Yeah, Bitcoin sort of acts, acts like um, the, the court system, I guess, in this case. If there's a problem, um, if there's any sort of dispute on the Lightning network, then Bitcoin settles the dispute. Um, so there's really no way to cheat the system um, to create extra Bitcoin to, to um, you know, steal other people's Bitcoin because it's secured by that Bitcoin base layer. Exactly. So merchants are already adopting this. I believe every travel by bit merchant, um, you can already do it. And again, we hear stories about some people still being trained in all this stuff. We're just so early on. But what's your hope for this going forward? The merchant thing is really exciting because, you know, Lightning is a system that's been designed exactly for this purpose. Um, so instant settlement and with the new payments platform coming out too, we'll start seeing merchants get um, instantly paid in fiat if they want that as well. So uh, the customer pays with Lightning, it gets instantly converted and sent to fiat. Um, but of course, we're trying to grow grow the crypto ecosystem and, and this technology is something that really works in this setting. So you can go to Travel by Bit website and have a look at the map. There's over 200 merchants now that are accepting Lightning, so you can you can go down and try it out. And going forward, more features for the wallet. Um, when do you expect the full release to, to come out? Yeah, we're still in beta, um, but anyone can download it and try it out. Um, we're basically well, we're not going to add features. We're just going to improve the re reliability, make it the world's easiest and simplest Lightning wallet. Um, some things I'm excited about is micropayments because, you know, I started playing with some of these websites, the media paywall websites like yalls.org. Um, you know, if you go to the Australian, for example, um, and you want to read an article, you've got to sign up to get past their paywall. But there's this new paradigm now where you can you can make this micropayment and it's actually worthwhile to do in Lightning because the fees are so tiny yeah. and the, the um, speed is so fast. So... Yeah, I think there's a lot of benefit for micropayments in the future. Yeah, and we're already seeing people turn away from Patreon and a few of these other services that are getting shut down if they don't like the content they're producing. So a huge opportunity for micropayments for a number of industries. Yeah, there's a platform called Tallycoin, which I think is an Australian project, um, which is designed to be a Patreon alternative. So we're going to see a lot of people, you know, taking back, um, you know, control over the, the, their systems from the intermediaries and get direct access to the Lightning Network. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. I'll put all the links in the description below, but I hope everyone's already had a play around with a wallet of Satoshi. But any final thoughts for everyone, Daniel? Yeah, just download the wallet and try it out. So walletofsatoshi.com, um, you'll get the hang of it and um, it's really easy to use, yeah. It certainly is. So thanks for joining us today, mate. Thanks a lot, Alex. Cheers, guys.